Okay, this is the, uh, the Nook by Barnes & Noble. This is actually the newer Simple Touch model. And um, I've got it actually on, turned off at this point, so you can see really quickly here how long it takes to power on. Um, on the back is the power button. I haven't really shown that before, but if you push that, that will turn the Nook on. And you can see it booting. I believe this is running a version of Android. I think it's Android 2.2. I'd have to check. But obviously it's uh, modified by Barnes & Noble to just run their Nook app as basically the only thing on here. Um, although it's kind of interesting, they do actually have um, a web browser built into this as well, which I think is just a standard part of Android, or maybe it's a standard part of the uh, uh, the Nook installation itself because it is available on the, um, the Nook Color but if you push the button the main button here at the bottom and then push search you could type in a web address like say apple.com for instance and push go and you'll notice that it moves into landscape mode but it brings up a web browser. It's a very simple web browser. You can't really do uh, a lot of fancy things on it. And of course, the screen refresh rate is really slow. But it will let you go to simple websites um, that aren't particularly complicated from what I've noticed. Um, it's a great way to quickly check your email if you've got no other way to do that. Um, it's pretty easy to go ahead and do it. And it's, um, you can either type the, uh, the uh, URL directly in here and you can go back to the search here and type the URL where you want to go. Um, or you can go back. I think you can swipe back up there, yes, and it goes back to the, uh, the previous page. And we could actually browse around here if I wanted to go to... Well, it's probably going to bring the same page up again. But I can click, for instance, to the store. And it will bring up... You'll see that I can't... Yeah, you can sort of see it. There's a loading bar. Um, loading across the top of the page here to show what it's doing and there comes the uh, Apple Store for instance. Um, there are some basic features of this browser. You can access some of these by pushing here. You can create a new window. Um, go to your bookmarks and it will do bookmarks. Um, refresh it. Some more options down here um, will get you to the ability to add bookmarks or find things on a page. The search for things on the page works quite well. Um, get page info and that sort of thing. There's also a settings button. And I'll turn this back into portrait mode so you can see. And it's interesting, you can go in here and switch this between um, identifying itself as a desktop or an Android. I'll switch it back to Android here. Um, text size, default, zoom, pages, auto fitting. This is where you set it to go to landscape if that's what you want. If not, it'll stay in the portrait mode. Um, and you can see the various things in here that it allows you to do. I can push to go back here to my page. And that's kind of the basics of how that works. Um, but it's, um, it's a surprisingly full-featured browser for, uh, for being kind of a hidden heat feature on, uh, on this particular Nook. So that's kind of neat. Um, I've heard some people question how the, um, the touch interface works on the Nook. It's kind of interesting. You um, on this model, it's not flush the screen um, to the bezel. There's a little thunder you can probably hear. We've got a storm coming through. But the reason that this is kind of um, sunk in, it's not flush with the display, is because this particular um, touch technology is unlike a uh, uh, it's unlike a capacitive or a uh, a pressure sensitive touch screen. It's using a series of um, LEDs. There's an LED grid basically that's hidden. It's infrared LEDs, I'm sorry. There's an infrared light going through being pulsed across this screen and basically it's just checking for where it sees a disruption in that screen. So if I touch here for instance, it's indicating, it's blocking the light basically that's going across there, the infrared light, and indicating that that's where you're pushing a spot on the screen. So it's a very light touch. You don't have to press at all 
um, to make it work, you just basically have to touch that spot of the screen very, very gently, and it will react to it um, and work from there. So um, that's what that's going on, and that's why this can't be completely flush, from my understanding. There has to be a little bit of a bezel, particularly um, in the uh, in this particular um, type of uh, infrared that it uses, that it's got to have some space to be able to do that. 